yo yo panther nation what is good welcome back to two fans in the stands i am your favorite armchair gm cj and i am your favorite couch scout is jordan there tony come on one time uh oh let me hit the crabs let me hit the crabs with dylan i see dylan in the house already see, yeah see that dylan you starting already cuz you starting already tony what's good with you cuz how you doing Man, I can't call it. You know me. I was trying to shake a little honey from the tree, dog. Just trying to shake a little honey from the tree. <laughs> okay. How you feeling, cuz? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. Had a few days down in uh down in Savannah, Georgia. Um, a few days not messing around, moving stuff in the shed. So I I'm I'm doing good. Doing good. Learned a couple things. The further south you go, the worse uh the driving gets. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> no yeah, doubt. I, I know we got. Yeah, I know we got yeah, a lot yeah. of people from. Uh, I know we got a lot of people from South Carolina in here that that watch us. And um, I don't know if it, anybody from Georgia, but whoo, Lord have mercy. I will say this though: twenty six, seventy seven, ninety five was was smooth all the way down there though. Everybody was getting it. Wasn't nobody going slow. But <laughs> once, once you get off the highway and get on some of these back roads, yeah, it's a different story. <laughs> Hey, I feel you. I feel you. What you got? What you got good for us today? What you got cooking? Uh, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Nothing special. Nothing special. But before we get into that, everybody, if you're new, welcome. Okay. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, like the channel, check us out on all social media at Two Fans in the Stands and on x or we like to call it twix that's a mixture of twitter and x you can check us out at two fans i t s okay we appreciate it and if nothing else folks on your way in like it and if you're on your way if you're already in and you haven't liked it on your way out give us a like we appreciate it all right but um yes sir and let me say cops be lurking hey let me tell you hey <laughs> i didn't see a single cop the entire ride down and i saw one cop in columbia on the southbound side on the way back i mean now you know we oh, were doing wow. about a traffic was doing about a good 85 90 miles an hour the entire way there as soon as i crossed over the border of south carolina it seemed like everybody just took off so but but yeah i i was looking i was looking but not not a not a single one on the way back it was it was a long ride. It was traffic everywhere, so we had to we had to dip back into a little town called I think it's Ellery, and then Gadsden, and then we came out in Columbia. But you know, he said you got lucky. It's it's a Wednesday. Hey, well you know this was uh this was last uh Thursday and then Sunday, so yeah I, I probably did right. get lucky. Yeah, but yeah man. But um, let me get into a couple of these comments. Let's see what's up. Everybody's in here. Of course, okay. we got Dylan. Panthers fans on y'all make sure y'all go check them out. The big What's rich good, homie man? Uncle Quan with the Panthers experience. So let's get it. hit that like button. Yes, Mr. What's big up, on Juan? what's up? What's going on? Mr. Hunky so Door said Hump day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He said, yo, yo, from Tampa. Oh man, he down there in the what's in, going in the on, Goodwill. Mr. Hunky Door? Yeah, Marco he down there Cash, with the what up? Yeah. What up, Mark? Days are getting Days a dragon to the draft, tired of talking and ready to do. Hey, you ain't said nothing but the I truth. I feel you. Nothing I but feel you. the truth. Just Zoe, what's going on, man? How you doing? Let me see. Mr. Big Arm, do we have enough for Stefan Gilmore? Let me say that has yet to be seen. I think right now we are, I, I think, eight million in, in cap space. So yeah, uh, and I that's believe after like that. Yeah, and I think that's after Derek Brown's uh the details of his contract are out, and we'll get into that in a second. But I think we got around eight right. million left. So I know there's probably some moves that's still going to be made. You know, some I don't know, some people gonna get, you know, contracts extended or you know, whatever. But um we'll, we'll see right. what's going on. We'll see what's going on. Let me see in the car. So I don't always agree with y'all say, but I am impressed with what y'all created from nothing. Go ahead and get my cousin on the team. <laughs> hey. Hey, let me tell you, we'd be, we be happy to have. Uh huh. Look, we we be <laughs> happy to have him. Happy to have him. Let me tell you. Hey, let me, let me ask you this, man. You uh, you you as country as your cousin. Let me tell you. I know y'all some hard working <laughs> brothers down there. But boy, let me tell you, it, it, it's it's all it's all in good fun though. But when I heard my man talk, I said, boy, 
Let me tell you, he country, country. But that's all right, though. <laughs> that is Perfect. all right. Let me see. Who else we got in here? Um, hey, Red Swarm. He said, yo, yo, what's good? Third uh -oh. CJ. Falcons going to win the NFC South this year with Kirk Chain. Hey, man, good to see you here, Red Swarm. Well, I always see you over there with what's um, up, Swarm? With, with, with Black Cat and them uh, talk, talking junk. Hey, <laughs> what's going on, man? How you doing? Let me see. Yeah. Nate, my boys don't come up for sure. Keep up the good content. Hey, we appreciate it, man. We appreciate, hey, appreciate you, Nate. Man. We appreciate yeah. that, my brother. Hey, anytime, Dylan. Anytime, man. Anytime. Hey, look at Tip Drill Will. Keep pounding, peace. Hey, man, appreciate you, Will. Keep pounding. Tip Drill. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Will? <laughs> I went back and watched some Javon ba Baker film. He is a dog. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Let me see. Josh said, I traveled to Florida a lot. And man, SC got to fix those roads. Yes, yes, yes. My sister, yeah. my sister got married and moved down with her husband to um out right outside of Columbia. And the street that they live on has been the same since 2005. There has not been a repair, uh, anything to you know, field, nothing, no, huh? nothing, nothing. That road started like this uh, and over the years. It seemed like it's worn down like this right here. <laughs> like you're going on the bank on the NASCAR track now. Let me tell you, man. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Let me see. Antonio McClenahan. What's up, guy? How you doing, man? Hey, look. He yeah. said, hell no. Nah, we don't even sound like that down here. He the exception. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, oh, you hey. oh, you just gonna throw my plane in the bus like that in the car? I see, hey. and and you know, no, no, come on now, you know we, we, you know we all got that, you know, some some family that got that deeper accent than the rest of us. Come on now, you know where hey, we from? He, you know we got a couple. He got it from, he got it from somewhere. Now we ain't got it like that, <laughs> bro. I ain't heard nobody in our family sound like that. No, 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 we ain't gonna do that. Hey, <laughs> look, uh, Antonio said. Falcons going to suck. Red Swan. Red Swan said, "Nah, fam." <laughs> yeah, That's what's up. That's I, you know what's what? Up. Where uh, Red Swan is, is 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 a brother, so I ain't, I ain't gonna get it. I ain't, I ain't I'm not gonna go in on him right now. It's too early. <laughs> yeah, shoot. When we drop that link, maybe hop on here. Dig it. What yeah. up, fella? What's going on, man? How you doing? What's up, man? dig it? Dylan, I swear. The guy I broke my car driving on main two lane road in Columbia last year after the damn 12 hour shift. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's all. Uh, hey, them roads are rough, man. Those, those, those roads are rough. All right, cuz well, let's get into it. Okay, well, y'all seen the title, all right? So we wanted to talk about the uh the trenches, okay. And this is going to be the first uh episode in a, a little series that we're gonna do leading up to the draft. So tonight we got right the defensive line and the offensive line okay so we're going to go through look at who we um who the perceived starters are right then we're going to show you their backups they're all going to be on the same slide and we're going to talk about you know the strengths the weaknesses we're going to give them our grades you know what we think the 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 position group is, how they are right now okay and then when we get to the end we're going to do a mock draft and kind of sort of tailor it a little bit um to the position groups that we're talking about okay not you know right. um dedicate the entire draft you know to o-line and d-line but you know we're going to see how it looks like if we focus on the trenches and then going on we'll do the um the running backs the wide receivers um the secondary and the linebackers too okay but before we get into that um Derek brown's contract details have have come out okay so you want to bring that on the screen all right, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so let me see. Five years, what do you get? $96 million, okay? And yeah, the interesting thing about this, if you look at his guaranteed money, he only has guaranteed money in uh, 2024 and 2025, okay? $25 okay. million dollar signing bonus, and the prorated signing bonus is $5 million per year of contract. And... There's also a potential out, if I'm not mistaken, um, in 2027. So it, it, right. it was on, um, I got this off of uh, Over the Cap, I believe. I think Spot Track showed it, or I might have that backwards. But it's um, it's a potential out for them after, I think it's like three years, you know, but. Yeah, the last, the last two years avoided. 
Yeah, but hopefully Derek Brown, you know, stays around, keeps playing at a high level, and we won't have to even worry about that. But the one thing I do want to point out is that um, Brant Tillis and, and, and Dan Morgan are doing some magic with these contracts, okay? And they, they really have to in this first year, 2024, because the cap is not that friendly for us. And th- his cap right. hit this year is $6.6 million. Six million six hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay, so yeah. that actually, um, I think our cap space went up a, a little bit because of that. So, like I said, now we are around, I think, eight million dollars in cap space. I, I, y'all forgive me. I just saw it like five minutes ago. I went in the house and got some water and came back, and I, I promise you, I forgot the damn number. But I guess <laughs> it's just me getting old. But um, but yeah, it did free up a little bit of cap space. But it'll be interesting what they're going to do, you know, when we get closer to the draft, because now we don't have a first rounder, but, you know, we still we may have to free up some more money to sign the draft picks. But, you know, the way that Brent and um and Dan Morgan have been doing this, um, I, I don't I don't have any, you know, any doubts that they'll get it done. OK, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm pretty, about this I'm pretty sure. I think it's a good contract. I definitely feel like his uh, production since he's been here is warranted. Um, you know, we for the past two or three years, we've always talked about, you know, who is who is going to be that staple of the defense. And for a while, it looked like it was going to be Brian Burns. We traded away Brian Burns. So what's, what is our defensive? Who is going to hold the standard of the defensive identity going forward? Well, some people were saying J.C. Horn, but he doesn't – he can't stay healthy. He can't stay on the field consistent enough. And um, I always feel like it was Derrick Brown. You know, he got that makeup. He's the same type of um, player he was when he was at Auburn. He's always had that dog in him. You know, he always shows up with, when you need him. He's always available. And he goes hard every every snap, every game. So I didn't, I didn't have any doubt of who Derrick Brown is and what he could become. Just like any player, regardless of regardless if they're on offense or defense, you have to make sure they're in the right position and in the right scheme in order for them to see. And I think with Derrick Brown being uh in the scheme that he's in now and also in the right position, you know, mm-hmm. we saw last year, even the year before, how he started to uh flourish in that um you know, in that role, because that's the same position that he played in in college. He's more of a three technique than playing in mm-hmm. one technique. So, okay. yeah, but I definitely feel like the uh, the the salary that the money is warranted. Just you know, all you gotta do is just match it to his production. Yeah. Hey, and I want to um, let me see him comment. Well, I'm sorry, let me put this comment up. Daryl Moore said excited about. DB Tut and Ashawn run stopping the ability. Well, I, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm excited about two of them. Okay, the third one we'll get in that in a minute. Third one, I'm not, I'm not too sure, but I'm I'm, I'm definitely right. excited about two of them. Okay, just Zoe said I think we can free up around eight million more by restructuring uh, Moton's contract, and I think we can. But the only thing I'm wondering is, you know, why haven't they done it yet? And it's just me wondering. Because I am not an executive, you know, I'm like I said, I'm armchair GM, but you know, part part of me wonders why they haven't done that yet. Cause I think they did it. Um, they did something to his contract to begin the last year, year before last, or something. But I know they have it on here where he's eligible, you know, for a restructure according to uh uh spot track. So we'll see. Well, it, it could be a, a it could very well be a possibility that why why do something if you don't really need to, you know, mm-hmm. um, j- just because they they can't, just because they can restructure his contract and free up this money, and it's like say, just say if you got five other players that you can re- that you can reconstruct that you can re- reconstruct their contracts and free up extra twenty million dollars. Well, is that extra twenty million dollars is really going to be needed going forward right now? And then mm-hmm. do you really want to kick the can down the road on those other five players uh contracts? And now you for now you're looking to have more dead cap money 
that has to be paid out in the future because you keep keep you keep kicking the can down the road. So, you know, it it, it can always be a, a number of things, a number of reasons why they do it. Is to me, it's good to know that it's there if the option um, calls for it. You know, what I'm saying if they need it, it's there. You know, there's no need of um, disturbing the pot. You know, what I'm saying if it's not really needed. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 But yeah. I will say one thing I do, I would like them to go ahead and do it is if we still got a shot at bringing in Stefan Gilmore. Okay. Now those, you know, th those talks got everybody excited, including us. And as soon as we talked about it, we haven't heard, you know, a peak from it since. So. Right. Right. You know, Cause I definitely think we need more than the 8 million we got in the cap now. To uh to sign Stefan Gilmore, <clears throat> excuse me, to sign Gilmore, but yeah, yep, yep. Okay. All right, Sony, let's go ahead and go to the uh the first slide, sir. All right. Okay. So here we got the defensive line. All right, and I kind of repurposed the slides that I used um about a week or so ago. So we got your starters up top. The um our projected starters you got Brown, Derek Brown, Shy Tuttle, Ashawn Robinson. And behind them, you have Raquan Williams, LeBron Ray, and Nick Thurman. Okay. And uh, let me see who said it was Daryl. So the two that I'm excited about, Derek Brown and Ashawn Robinson. Okay. Now, Shy Tuttle, I'm not that excited about him as of yet because last season, I don't, and, and I'm trying to give everybody just a little bit of grace. OK, just 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 a little bit. I don't necessarily know if he was a fit, you know, for Everett's system or. Right. I, he, he just he, he just seemed to disappear at times. You, you know, he'd be in the game and we started the season getting gashed in the run game. OK. And that was with Derek Brown, Shy Tuttle and Deshaun Williams. OK. So now I think you hear a Sean on here now. All right. That's an upgrade from uh, Deshaun Williams. OK, so the edges will be stout versus the run. But what is Tuttle going to do in the middle? And I bring this question up. Um, do we need do we need to find us a quote unquote true nose tackle? OK, I've heard uh, I heard Kendall the Goat talk about this a lot over on Black Cat Panther podcast. You know, y'all go check them out. Good fellas over there. Good content. Um, but, you know, he's been talking a lot lately about uh nose tackle and also talking about doing things in the trenches um do right. you think we need that that bigger stout nose tackle because it is it, shy Tuttle the one who's going to command double teams every play like we did when we had like starla tulele you get what i'm saying okay you know yeah. or maybe like you know i said like chris jenkins back in the day man i know i was taking it take taking it back but um but what do you think, Tony? Yeah, Chris, Chris, well, Chris, real quick, Chris Jenkins wasn't a nose tackle. He was more say like he was a more he was more of a defensive tackle. He was more of in that um K1 short, you know, mm -hmm. um category. But yes, I do feel like we need that two gap control um type of nose guard. Um last year we was hoping that we had that position settled. And then I believe it was right before training camp, we had got rid of Marquand McCall, John Penicini. You know, he was released. I think that was somewhere in training camp when he was released. And then mm -hmm. uh, Bravion Roy, he was cut and, and let go. So we was wondering, even going into last year, it was like, are they going to bring another true nose guard in? You know, mm -hmm. because that, like I've always preached, like I've always said, that is the strength. That is the core of a three-four defense, having a a strong nose tackle and a, and a middle linebacker. And they brought in Shaw Tuttle, and you know some people had Shaw Tuttle. I've seen him listed at three hundred, three hundred five. Then I saw him listed at like three twenty. And I saw some of the highlights when he played in New Orleans. Some some of the times when he played nose tackle, he held his own. You know, he was holding his own. Um, 
uh, taking up double teams in the middle, was still able to get off the double teams, you know, whether he was flowing left or to the right. And he was in he was in on all the plays. Well, I can say all the plays, but he, he was there. You know what I'm saying? So mm. when I saw what I saw last year of him, I was like, dang, that 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 this 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 guy looks nothing like what I saw on tape. And we all know how we look against the run early on last year. We was horrible against the run. And um mm-hmm. so yeah, I, I definitely feel like that nose tackle position needs to be upgraded. I know Nick Thurman came in a little bit and played nose nose tackle, but I think he really took off when you moved him over to the three technique. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he started playing a little bit more of defense tackle than uh, Deshaun Williams uh, at, at towards the end of last year. So I, I definitely like that. And, of course, LeBron Ray will be a, a backup. And I know I see you have Deshaun Williams up here, but he's not on the team anymore. Raekwon, Raekwon Williams. Oh, oh, that's Raekwon Williams. Okay. Yeah. See okay. That? Yeah, that's Raekwon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, okay. Raekwon, have you said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Raekwon. Yeah. But yeah. So to answer your question, long story short, yes, we need a um true nose tackle. I believe. Yeah. Hey, hey, T. Thompson, so, man. Hey, he. He, he yeah. looked like he ran around the school and was like, "Hey, lunch money now, give it up." Hey, he came, <laughs> he came through that line. They, they, Dave Canal was like, "What's up, guys? Hi, hey, hi. oh, hey, Asia. <laughs> hey, Asia, like you, he, like he would bounce your ass straight up out of the building with one hand." Mm-hmm. In fact, I but I want to talk about that. I thought Dave oh, Brown was a big dude. Yeah. Yeah, Aishon's a big dude. But I did want to talk about that real quick, though. I thought that was pretty cool, you know, how he welcomed his players in, you know, on the first day of uh, workouts and stuff. And, you know, that might not mean much to, you know, a lot of folks. But, you know, to me, I I think it's, you know, it's all about building relationships. And these are all players. He knows a, a few of them. Some of them he's meeting for the first time. So the fact that he stood out there, greeted all of them, said what's up, dapped them up. You know, and I said this before, I think he's off to a good start. So, but yeah. But uh okay. we got our friend um the third fan with us. We got C Dougie. What's yes, up, sir. how you doing, sir? Well, fellas, oh. what's going on? What's going what's on? What's going man? on, C Dougie? What's happening? Chilling, 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 chilling in the cut, in the cut. I was in the cut just <laughs> chilling for the night, had this game on, and then we got blown out. I was like, man, and I even get the notification. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, so I gotta do what people got to do possibly. I got to unfollow and then subscribe and hit that bell again because I didn't get the notification that y'all were live. So only yeah. way I knew was behind the scenes. So that's why I'm late to the party, man. Yeah. Yeah, that, and that's my fault because I swear, you know, I always send Doug a message and be like, hey, you know, here's the link. Come on and join us. And I've been running around all day and I, I completely forgot. So that's my fault. No, nah, it's all good. All good. Tony, Tony, Tony been spitting. Um, talking about this D line, which I think he really loves because he's he's the 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 the, the, the couch scout couch scout, meaning that he loves the trenches and that's two things that he's been talking about offensive line and defensive line. So I really think he's extraordinary. You know, extraordinary. You forgot to put the extraordinary on there. The, the yeah. couch scout. That, 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 <laughs> it, just, it just it, it that that depends on which day you drinking that <laughs> that, that good old Hennessy and tea. It just depends on which mm, day you hey. drinking that. It, it is Thursday morning Already. for him, so he probably got it in the cup today, though. <laughs> but no, nah, two two quick points, y'all can keep going. They can out as a player's coach, and one thing mm-hmm. that Robert Hunt said is he didn't know who had more juice, uh, Dave Canales or McDaniel. And when he meant that, I think a lot mm-hmm. of people are talking about drip, but he was talking about the drip, but just the personality just jumps out on the screen to you. And you want that coach that's hands-on, a coach that basically has an open-door policy. And that's one thing right. that, you, that, that you want as college, you want that as high school, and you want that as the pros. Don't, you know, hey, you know, you do your job, I do my job. No, if you got a problem or you got something, I think Dave Pronounce has an open-door policy. Point blank, period. I think the, I think the players are going to love it. And I think it's, it's, it's a may, um, match made in heaven. On the okay. defensive line, quick and easy. I heard um, CJ 
um, say I went back before I joined in to make sure I didn't mess any points up. I agree with CJ. Uh, there yeah. are two. There are two out of three people on this D line. I think I forgot who wrote the comment that I agree with. That thing was um, Robinson Tuttle. It was it Thurman. No, um, it was uh, Daryl Moore. He said he was excited about Brown, Tull, and Robinson. And okay. I told him, I said, I was excited about two of those three. Okay. So, yeah. 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 Like I said, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. I do think this room is not done. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I think a lot of mops I've been able to do. Um, I have been able to grab Brayton Fisk out of uh, Florida State. If that does happen, yes, I would love that. I would love that. Again, like I said, I know. Yeah, I know. I know where to get my 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 big cousin Tony Hype, and I know he would love that <laughs> acquisition. If you have, yes, you know, you know, you know the polar bear, and um, is it what Al Albano Albano polar bear, which will be Brayton Fist. So, um, <laughs> like I said, um, I, 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 I really, <laughs> hey, I, I mean, I ain't gonna say black or white. I, you know, I had to make it a rare breed because you know. <laughs> but um, I, I really, I, I'm really liking, you know, what I'm. I actually, did you guys read the article where they said Ashawn Robinson's supposed to be bringing leadership onto that defensive side of the ball? Did y'all read that mm -hmm. on Panthers.com today? Yeah, they made they, they no, did a little, yeah they did a little article talked about his leadership skills and how how, how he can be an elder um, elder statesman with Shad Thompson. So I, I love it. Um, again, like I said, it's. It's, it's itching me because we're getting closer and closer to the draft, and I'm really ready to see this master game plan that Dan Morgan's able to facilitate, and hopefully he hits on every pick. But um, as far as the D-line, I love it. Again, this room is not done. There's a lot of options to be added, either from the DN and the nose tackle or interior d lineman. So, like I said, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just ready to see, you know, again, we got, what, 15 days? I'm just, I'm just itching and ready to go. Yeah, yeah, and and, and it got me. I'm sorry, it I said got me. Oh my goodness, it has me wondering. Uh, because <laughs> like Tony was talking, yeah, I'm sorry, man. Well, let me, let me tell you, when I say uh, the Bolivia came out of me right then, it got me, but um, yeah. <laughs> 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 ah! <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh god, hey, but um. With, um, Damn, guys, last, no, no, I, I'm back now. I, I got you. But last year, okay, okay, like you okay. Said, Tony, we had um, we had uh, Marquand McCall. Okay, we had John Pennicini, yeah, yeah. who I think he had Big an injury, snack. um, that that he couldn't pass the physical or whatever. But when we was talking the other day, and um, Marquand got picked up by I think it was the Patriots. It was the Patriots. Yep. And then they were it like, right. you know, he couldn't pass the physical because of some kind of a knee issue. But he came out and was like, you know, no, I'm I'm all good. You know, I'm ready to go, ready to work. But um, but now what I'm wondering is, okay, so even if we were to go get uh Braden Fisk, Braden Fisk is I think like six three, six four, two hundred and um and nine under uh, ninety five pounds, or he might yeah, be at three hundred. At the combine, he weighed in at two ninety five, but he typically plays about three hundred five, so he dropped ten pounds for for the combine. Okay, all right. So I'm yeah. wondering if Evero has a you know a, a, a mold or a type for that nose tackle guard, you know, because I mean, up that nose tackle position because we're all thinking like, hey, we need this big, you know, 340, 350 pound dude to go in there and eat space, but you know, I, what I'm wondering is, is, is Evero thinking differently? Like, does he have a different type that he wants to see for that um, nose tackle position? Because you, you, you think you could have got went out and got somebody else bigger than Shia Tuttle to come in and play a nose guard, but they went after Shia Tuttle. What'd you think? Yeah, you, well, you go, you go back and look at uh, the defenses that he had in Denver. To be honest, he didn't really have a big heavy nose tackle in Denver. Mm -hmm. Um I I can't I can't remember everybody that was on that uh defensive line, but even when he was in LA, they didn't have a big wide body as, as you would say type of nose tackle. It's always been someone that was about 310 that mm -hmm. can um move the pocket, be disruptive, good against the run and the pass. Um I don't think 
uh, Brandon Br- Braden Fitz will be looked at as a nose tackle. He is a disruptive mm-hmm. uh, three technique defensive lineman. So, okay. you know, like I always say, um, CJ, the quickest way to get to the quarterback is straight up the middle. So you got Derrick Brown on one side and Braden Fisk and Ashawn Robinson on the other that can cause havoc, you know, that can be disruptive. You know, um, not necessarily the quote-unquote sack artist, but that can just blow up the offensive line. That can move a quarterback off his spot. That can make him uncomfortable back there mm-hmm. in the pocket. So when you can have two of those guys instead of one, and then when you start rotating guys in and out, you always have constant pressure on that offensive line and that quarterback. So that's why I think it's imperative that they add someone else to mm-hmm. that defensive line, whether it's a big body nose tackle that we think that the Panthers want, but we don't really know what Ivero's scheme really is. I take that back because when you look at the moves that was made last year, all three of the big wide body guys were let go. So, mm-hmm. you know what I'm That's saying? That's why I brought so that up. I, yeah. think, I, I think he wants to, I think he wants to be more athletic and long and that you can do multiple things that, that, that mm-hmm. you can only, that you not only can be um, good against the run, but can get after the passer as well. So, we 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 don't okay. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think the draft hey. and go ahead. No, no look at this. <laughs> huh? He said Thurman <laughs> slips a copy of his big tape and everyone's locked up in there. <laughs> oh that is a good one. Oh, oh that's that a good no. one. Hey, can I <laughs> hey the only thing I'm gonna say go ahead, let, uh, it's quick. Wait, this wait. is one point. Hold on. Oh, hold on, Doug. Hold on, Doug. Let me point this one out. I know. I already did. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh, that's that's my boy, Danny. That's that's my boy, Mace. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He I always know. talking junk. Go, go ahead, Doug. Go ahead, Nah, Doug. real quick. I'm going to say, I'm going to make a combination with two names. One was Sean Robinson. Uh, who was his running mate when he was at L.A.? Aaron Donald. Carolina don't have no guy named Aaron Donald on this D-line. We don't have no Aaron Donald on this D line. So when he was yeah. at LA, yeah, you can put anything. Cause didn't Bruce Irvin play for him too when he was with the LA Rams when he was there? Or no, he was at Seattle when he was I, I at. I believe so. I, so. I think I think Bruce Irvin played one year with the Rams. Don't quote me on that, but I believe so. I, I know he did, but I don't know if Everett was a D coordinator. That's where I, I'm just trying. Oh, I can't remember. Oh. But no, what I'm getting at is yes. Sean Robinson was your mean, big, ugly, and then you had an athletic, undersized, three technique in what? In Aaron Donald. Because Aaron Donald, mm-hmm. if people really understand Aaron Donald does not fit your typical nose tackle or interior defensive lineman because he's undersized. But with his undersized, what is he is? He's athletic, and he has finesse moves. And what I thought, I thought Sean Tuttle would be able to do that. But we saw what Sean Tuttle got used and abused last year. And that's where right. where Tony said is, when you run up the middle, we had nobody to meet him. Yeah, Derrick Brown was able to mm-hmm. do one, but again, Derrick Brown can't keep doing it every single play. That's the reason mm-hmm. why we, we beat up that middle of the line. And again, if somebody goes down, you really expect Sean Tuttle to come in and replace Derrick Brown? No. Do you right think Sean Tuttle can... Do you think Chateau can come and replace A. Sean Robinson? No. Why do you think they went and got Thurman and Ray during the season? They were not originally on this roster, and they saw they mm-hmm. needed bigger bodies but athletic-type uh, interior D linemen to help alongside Derrick Brown. I yeah. mean, if there's, if there's a way we could cut Chateau, I've said it numerous of times, I think, I think it was a smart move. Because, again, he's not, he's not starter, starter um, caliber. He's a rotational guy. But now, again, if you add a rookie in, where does that leave him? Because you're not going to have six, six um, interior linemen on the roster. More than likely, you're going to have four. And you're probably going to have mm-hmm. one on the practice squad. Mm-hmm. So, like yeah. I said, I just, I, just, I just think, you know, I, I, 
I say I say I don't know bad players, but some, but some, sometimes I don't understand contracts. That's the best way I can say it. I understand why he's getting the money that he's getting, and he's supposed to be mm-hmm. our starting nose tackle. I will leave it at that. Yeah. Now well, in New you, Orleans, well, they ran a four three, right? Yes, they ran a four three. Correct. Okay. Correct. So is, yeah. this, is this was this his first year um, playing in the middle in the three four? That I'm not sure in the pro leagues because he's only he's only played for one team, and that was New Orleans. Okay. So I yeah, don't know. I don't, I don't know about his running. college. I don't know about his college, but no, this is okay. their. This is his first time being there. Okay. So I wonder if that had anything to do with it. Like I said, I'm 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 in the business of giving everybody in this team. Well, not not everybody, but you know most people a little bit of grace. So I'm wondering what he'll look like um, this year after he has a year of this system under his belt. So you know we'll we'll see. Cause he he ain't going nowhere this year. Tuttle's go, Tuttle's going to be our starter unless you know some miracle falls to us in the draft and comes out there and just starts you know n- knocking offensive linemen out of the stadium. Right, right. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, uh, Tony. Let me go back. What Tuttle like? Be a power. <laughs> I'm <laughs> serious. I'm serious. If y'all look at film, if y'all look at film, I, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. Doug, I know. It's ridiculous. Like yeah. it's so bad. It's I, I'm, so I'm, bad. I'm trying. I'm trying to give him a little bit of grace. I'm trying to give him a little bit of grace. But I, I got you. You, I, you I, know I, what? You I, you I, did you did bring up a good point though, Doug. Because I I didn't I didn't even think about the fact that he very well could have been playing out of position because coming from a four three to a three four. That's it, it. May sound simple, but it's really mm-hmm. a different beast. Especially because it's gap control, and, gap control, and you only got three D linemen, so he had to learn it. Yeah, because mm-hmm. your, your your responsibilities are different in the four three as opposed to a three four. Four Correct. three, you more one gap control scheme defense. In a three four, you got to be two gap. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, yep. hey, you, hey, you you could you could be right about something. You you very well could be uh hitting on something right there. So um, yeah. hey, we'll, we'll maybe. See. Maybe we need to give Shot Tut a little grace, like we gave everybody, like we gave everybody else. Because last year was just a shit, sh- a shit show. Period. Mm-hmm. Offensively, more so than defense. But you know, like I said, it was the first year for basically everybody on that defense in that three four scheme, new offensive mm-hmm. scheme, which we know how that turned out. How that was a yeah. debacle from from the beginning. So I think. A lot of players, offensively and defensively, were playing out of position, asked to do things that they hadn't been doing um, currently in their career or even coming from college that that they were asked to do. So if, if we're going to give grace to, um, you know, Bryce Young or Icky or, or you know, Bradley Bozeman or, or whoever, Hey, we mm-hmm. may have to give a little grace to Shaw Toto as well. Yep. Yep. Well, yep. well, but I'll you, say this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sue. No, I was, I was gonna say, but you you know who will not get any grace? Who? Ian Thomas. <laughs> hey, I was gonna say this. I was gonna say this. Y'all, y'all saying give him grace, but you can give him grace, but now he got comp. He got competition. You can give him all the grace he won't. They brought yeah. in bodies yeah. for a reason. So they that grace can mm-hmm. go out the window yeah. because now you about to lose your job and you might be possibly cut. Well, so, the competition came yeah, in that. last year, Doug. The competition came in last year. Oh no, no, no! I'm saying Ray. on top. I'm saying on top of it now. Again, yeah. like I said, uh-huh. you got six players right here. Let's say we bring mm-hmm. in one, and it don't have to be drafted; it's undrafted. That's seven yeah. interior D linemen right now. Seven. Again, yeah. how yeah. many do y'all think is going to be on the active roster? Well, we okay. Th- so let's look at it right now, like 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 we have right now on the screen. Mm-hmm. We already know Brown Brown Tuttle and Robinson ain't going nowhere, and I also Correct. think mm-hmm. that Nick Thurman. I would say Thurman ain't going Nick nowhere. Thurman, uh-uh. Correct. Yeah, right. So that that's four. So you talking about Rex Williams? That's three. Williams, that's, three. Oh, that's three. Tony, that's you said. Four. Hope no. no he talking about the top Brown, three and Tuttle Thurman. Robinson. Yeah, top three the, and, and at Thurman that makes four. Oh, so you say you say Tuttle's gonna make it. I'm just trying to make sure I'm on the same track. Yeah, yeah, okay. he, yeah. He's okay. gonna make it. Re- okay. 
no, 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 no matter how much you dislike him, though, he, he's going to be there. <laughs> okay, that's how I try to make sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, he, he, he he's going to be there. He he's in the plans for this year. At least one more year, he's in the plans. But so, like you said, those four, I think, are entrenched. Um, if you happen for some for whatever reason, say you brought in two studs on on the defensive line somewhere you know Thurman can always you know that 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 can always be a battle between him and a rookie right the Brian mm-hmm. Ray and Raquan Williams definitely probably going to be more of a practice squad call up if you need type of player and I'm just basing that off of what what they did last year LeBron Ray got in spot duty you know a lot of times he was uh inactive you know Raquan Williams, I, I didn't even know. I, I forgot the dude was even on the team. I think he was on the practice squad all last year, if I'm not mistaken. So there, there are some pieces that can be moved. And, you know, you always want to create competition. But if I bring in somebody that can beat you out, not only does that create another roster spot, but it also creates more competition going forward. Because, I mean, we just got that much better at said position you, you know what i mean mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah that 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 that's that will always be a possibility okay all but right before well, before before cj before cj go on and hey, we got 75 people uh watching right now we only have 36 likes so if you can do us a favor smash that like button subscribe turn those post notification bell so you always be alerted when we drop new content and go live we'll greatly appreciate it Hey, Daniel, there you go. No, the, the one. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when, when I clicked it, the, the new comment came in. <laughs> as yeah. soon as I went to click that, it, let's, one, yeah. let's yes. talk about that one real quick. Go ahead, CJ. Yeah, well, okay. Well, let's talk about him because it, this he's the dude that got uh, he got charged with the DWI over the weekend, right? He was Boy. arrested for DWI on Saturday, yes. Like, mm-hmm. like do y'all really know? Because they waited four hours to even give him the test. And he still mm. was over the limit. And they Ooh. said if they did, if they did it at the scene, it would have it probably would have been worse than the number that he blew whenever they gave him the test. Mm. Oh, really? You know, I didn't yes. I didn't I didn't read all the yeah, details. Well, you know, I'm I, in Texas. That's the only reason why. Like the whole thing mm. with Rice, where um what's his name out of Kansas City? They got a warrant out for his Rich arrest right, right now. Yeah, they got a warrant out for yeah. yeah, they got a warrant out for his arrest. Dummy. That's on it. If, if I dummy. went in Texas, if I went in Texas, I would have known this. But again, with sweat, they waited till he made it to the station to give him his breathalyzer. They said if they gave him the breathalyzer on the scene, they could only imagine what number he would have blew. So mm. wow. And again, yeah. like th- th- this reminds me of um um Larry, uh, no, it's not Larry Townsend. What's Townsend's first name? Uh, what's Townsend's first name? What's the um, Townsend, the uh, offensive lineman from um, the Texans? Larry, Larry Townsend. Yes, with the whole thing with him smoking weed out of a bomb. This is that mm. same thing. Oh, with the mask on. Yeah, mm. with the mask on. This is giving me the same. It's giving me the, almost a flashback. You're doing something. I mean, only thing that's different is somebody exposed him. Because they dropped the video right before the draft. You got two weeks before the draft. You're supposed to almost be at the back end of the first round. Now teams are looking at it. Some teams don't want to touch you because why would you jeopardize something like this going into the season or going into you basically making bank? Yeah. Now, now Tony, now I did bring this up to you. I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before. Now, uh, who was it? Uh, Was it Jalen Carter? Um, was it last year? Yeah, year before last. From Georgia, it was last year with yeah. Georgia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, mind you, now he was in the wreck. Ended up killing somebody. You know, so, their trainer. Their trainer. He killed. He killed their yeah. trainer. Racing. Now, Racing. I'm. I'm yeah. not. I'm. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to compare the two or say that they're even. You know, remotely. You know, even or, or whatnot. But you. You know, I don't know if he. You know, if teams bring him in, talk to him. They get a sense of where his head is at, and if he really, you know, 
I guess, feels any kind of remorse or, you know, knows what he did was wrong and like, hey, I'm not going to do this again. You know, he may not drop that far, but let me tell you, if that Joker drops and it's down in the start of day two, you know, hey, I I, I would not be mad at the Panthers at all. Yeah. Hey, Jay, well, Jalen Carter didn't get suspended, did he, for his actions, did he? No, no, uh -uh. no, no. Because okay. I, I don't think okay it is it's very it's very touchy when it comes to stuff like that because when you aren't in the NFL there's not but so much they can do um as far as uh penalizing the player or suspending the player because he wasn't a part of that league uh as of yet what 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 I hate what what I really hate the most is when these guys come out of college and you already know that you have committed to the you know for the NFL draft. You you know you're you're ready to take that next step in your career. Why don't you do the right thing to put yourself in a better position going forward? I don't understand why these guys just do dumb stuff and can just ruin potentially ruin their future before it even gets started like stuff like that it, it just makes no sense to me I, and i never really understood it only thing i could really say is who who are in these players corners who are they listening to who are they getting advice from are they getting the proper advice you know is mm -hmm. is the right people in their circle stuff like that i just wish these players man you spent we, we've all played Little league football, and we've been playing football football all our life. And a lot of people always have these dreams of making it to the NFL. And then, then when they make it to the NFL, they do something stupid that can take all that away, all that hard work away. It ain't just that off season, that one particular off season. But we talking about something that you've been playing all your life, something that you have loved all your life, and now you get to that pinnacle. Now you get to that to that place to where you can start making life changing decisions and making life changing money and then you throw mm -hmm. it all away by being dumb. I don't I don't I don't understand it. Yeah well let's just hope that you know let's hope he learns his lesson and hopefully he learns his lesson he won't do it again and just maybe you know he'll be around on day two. You never know. Yeah. But um now before okay. we move on to the other side of the trenches um I want everybody to, and everybody in the chat, y'all do this too, but Tony and Doug, I want y'all to give me y'all grades uh, on the offensive line. <laughs> hey, Dylan, I can't song? stand you, man. Oh. I can't. Tony sounds like he's got a friend of your DW. Go ahead, Doug. <laughs> Are you talking... Uh, Cause I I, I kind of cheated, CJ. I kind of cheated. A through F. Okay, you want a letter grade? Uh, yeah, give me a letter grade. A through F. A B minus. And the reason why okay. I say B minus is because I was saying I cheated a little bit because I was reading where they have Carolina right right now, number four, mm -hmm. as position by by position on each. Each each um offensive lineman that we have, the number four ranked offensive line, people were like, Doug, how can you say that? We're supposed to have this great offensive line with camping. Da 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 da. Offensive line. You said offensive line. You said give you great for offensive line. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant defensive line. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. My, my my bad. My bad. I'm sorry. I meant D line. I give a solid B. A solid okay. B right now. Dang, and that and All that's right. it. I mean, bringing Derrick Brown back, locking him down for that contract. Um, mm. You bring that in Clown. Big. Yeah, that was very big because a lot of people were questioning can Dan Morgan do it. Um, bringing in mm. Clowney, you bring in Wanham. Um, Barno finally gets a chance. What you see out of DJ Johnson um, with the acquisition, I do think A. Shot Robinson probably will start. I'm praying he will start with Shot Total or we bring in somebody. Um, but I give it a solid B. Solid B. Okay. Tony. Okay. Um, yeah, I was I was I was initially going to say uh C, but I, I I would say I would say about a B minus only 
for I, lo- I love the fact that we did lock down Derrick Brown. That that was that was that, that was paramount because if you would have let him walk, then our D line would definitely be up shit creek. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. by keeping that anchor, that like, by keeping that staple on the defensive front, I did like that, and I definitely love the fact that we brought in Ashawn Robinson. You know, to play opposite of him. Um, I saw somebody say in the comments, would uh, Ashawn Robinson play nose tackle? I think Ashawn Robinson is versatile. I think if he played nose tackle, that's not going to be a permanent position. He could play anywhere from the nose to the five technique on, on that defensive line. So I think it was more so about his versatility as a defensive lineman uh, coming in because that's the same thing he did when he was uh, with the Rams. And uh, I believe he also did uh, last year with the Giants. Um, I, I say, I, I, yeah, I say, I say about a B plus a B minus because we still really don't know what the middle of that D line is going to look like as far as nose tackle. And because it was such a weakness of ours last year and that position hasn't been upgraded at all. So for, for that, that's why I, I got to rock with like at least a B minus. Okay. You know what? I'm going to be slightly harsher on them. I'm going to give I'm going to give this group a C. Okay? I love that they brought Derrick Brown back. I think he's going to do his thing. Okay? I give him a C because like we were saying, we don't know what the deal with Shy Tull is. Will he be better in this second year in this 3-4? Um and like we like uh, Doug brought up, you know, when Ashawn was in LA, he had um Aaron Darling next to him. Okay. See me some Bojangles coupons. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but when he was in um well, he was with New York last year, he also had uh what's what uh my man that just got the extension up there. Um Dexter Lawrence. Dexter, Dexter Lawrence. Lawrence. Oh yeah, Dexter Lawrence. Mm-hmm. You know, so with you know, now he does have Brown with him now, but I'm I'm still in my wait and see mode. You know what I mean? I'm I'm, I'm still in my way. You see more. I like Ashawn Robinson. I like that they brought Brown back. But for me, Tuttle is still the the, the question mark for me. And I, I got to see it in action first. So I'm going to give him a C for now. Real quick, do, do you mm-hmm. think Tuttle will benefit by having better play on the other side of him that that can possibly free up some double teams that can get him more one on one with the center. So, do you think by having Ashawn Robinson on one side and Derrick Brown on the other, that would help him out in the middle, where he won't see as much double teams? It should warn him. It Hope should so. warn him because again, he's undersized. So, again, he mm-hmm. can't he can't take on a double team. And again, most of the highlights I've seen him get double teamed and walloped, like pancake, like so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hold just, on. Wait just wonder. Just wonder. <laughs> sure. Oh, needs that child robs to get three times a day. Facts. <laughs> Absolute facts. That is a good. One. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Mr. Hunky Dory said I give the Panthers D line C plus on paper and maybe up to a B. I can rock with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, can, I, rock I, I can rock with that. I can rock with that. Okay. Starlet movie Phil said everything works together on the line. So if Robinson works out, it could benefit Tuttle. Yes. That that's so, that's what I was alluding to. That's that's what mm-hmm. I was alluding to. Okay. All right. Okay. So we got a, a C, a B minus, and a B. Or you, did you give him a B plus on? No, I don't think nobody gave a B plus. I think it was just a B. Okay, I, I, two, I was two B's I was, and a C. I was back and forth. Yeah, I was back and forth between a B minus, B plus. I, th- I think I said on B minus. B okay. minus, yeah. B B minus and a C. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. we'll take that for now. Hopefully, it gets better. You know, time to see the start. Let's go ahead and slide on to the next slide, Tony. All right, y'all. Offensive line. Oh, yes, line. sir. Okay. So we got your start. Is it Quando, Lewis, Corbett, and I got the right pitch up there this time, Tony. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Robert Hunt and Taylor Moten, okay, and their backups. Now I put Christensen at tackle, 
Um, we got Zavala, K Mays. Now, mind you, Mays can play guard, but I think as of right now, that's before the draft. I'm putting Mays as the backup center because I think he's the only other person that has any experience playing center. And you get uh, and, go ahead, Tom. But before, yeah, when K Mays was coming out of college, they said he was um he would be a better pro at center than he would be at guard or tackle. He played all three positions in college when he first started out of Tennessee, then transferred mm -hmm. to uh, Georgia. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, he went back to Tennessee. I think he went back to Tennessee. So something like that. Um, K Mays. But he played, yeah, K Mays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He played right tackle, right guard, and center. Mm -hmm. But the scouting report on him when he came out, uh, they say that he would possibly, if he stayed at center, that he could possibly be an all pro at center. But I, I don't know based on what he has put on tape thus far. But I just want to throw that out there. Okay. And then we got uh, oh, uh, Nasty Nash Jensen over there and uh, Yash Nyman. Okay. Yes, that's the only thing that we're talking about. Oh God! Hey, so hey, let me tell you, he right though. He yeah. right. I don't know what CJ did. <laughs> no, no, it was it, it wasn't what CJ did. These are the pictures that came off oh. the Panthers website. Yes, so some of oh. them were taking that gift <laughs> because you got like uh, you got Nyman, you got Hunt, and you got Lewis. Who haven't taken their yeah. official pictures with the team yet? I think these are the pictures right. that they have from Miami, but somebody yeah. has photoshopped the Panthers over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then the okay, other ones, these are these are the pictures that I had on there from uh from camp after camp last year. But but hey, yeah, but hey, but co coincidentally though, why they had to do Corbin Mays of Valen Christensen like that though? You know what I'm saying? Hey, that, I, I don't know. <laughs> that that that's shade. That's shade. Go ahead, man. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you good. But um, y'all y'all go ahead and give 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 me y'all thoughts on this offensive line, and I think we probably will all agree on what we think the um the biggest need for him right now is. But y'all go ahead. Go ahead, Doug. Go ahead. I think Zavala, Mays, and Jensen. Even though Zavala is the youngest out of all these, may be cut. Maybe uh -huh. cut. Um, again, when you spend 150 mil, they should be your starters. Um, yep. um, Robert Hunt looks freakishly huge. I thought Taylor Moten was huge, but from yes. the clips and the offseason, um, when he was walking down the hill, that guy is a, is a monster. Um, I already know what you go ahead and get it out there. I don't trust Austin Corbett. I know Tony. I'm not going to take his point. I know what he's going to talk about, but I don't trust it. That leg, I don't trust that leg at all. Um, and, again, if you do bring in a center, again, I think Zavala, Mays, and Jensen are on the chopping block. I don't know who. We may keep two out of three or maybe one out of three out of those. But I don't know who because, again, one thing that you need also is versatility. That's just they have Brady mm -hmm. Christensen being a swing tackle. He can play both both sides of the tackle, and we can use him at guard. Um, how do you say his name? Nigel, uh, Nigel, Nigel, Nigel. I mean, Nigel. if you look at Nigel, yeah. Nigel played both both sides on on the tackle position as well. So mm -hmm. that's all. It's short and sweet for me. Again, it's it's, it's okay. another group that you can't keep a lot of roster spots. Um, I think some of these may try to get on practice squad, but it just depends. Just really, just depends. Okay. Let's see Green yeah. Bay fan. I know says Nam is a solid rotational guy. I think he is. He has some good um take from that uh playoff game against yeah. the Cowboys. Yes, I, I was just I'm glad you pointed out CJ because the one highlight tape that I saw, he he did very good against uh the Cowboys taking on Dexter Lawrence and um Michael Parsons. So I think I think I think as far as the swing tackles outside the starters. I think those two positions are solid. Um, mm -hmm. I think K Mays will probably get cut before Zavala. Now I know that's probably probably saying a lot because uh, Zavala was a fourth round draft pick next year. So it always it always works out that the higher draft pick that you were, the higher the draft pick, 
the more leeway you get as a player in the league. All right. That that's that's just facts. So mm-hmm. whether he is the backup to Lewis or even if he's on the practice squad or whatever the case may be, I don't think Zavala will get cut. I think they're probably looking at Zavala as um someone that they can work with. He was just a rookie last year. He was injured. He played more when he was injured last year. I don't think he was ever fully healthy from that first injury. I think it was his biceps or something like that. And he came back. Uh I think he heard his biceps in a training camp, if I'm not mistaken. And um uh, because it was such a revolving door at, at both guard positions, I, I think he had to play Early on and more than he probably should have uh, last year. So, but my, my my main thing is that center position, that center that center position, and because we have such, um, I think there's such a deep class O lineman, such a good class of centers. Uh, somebody had mentioned a while back. Can't remember who it was. They was talking about Cedric Van Pran, and we could possibly take him. Uh, get him in the third round and pick 65. And I went back and I did a little research on Cedric Van Pan. I, I First of all, I had to apologize to the man because I didn't know that Cedric Van Pran played. He was a three-year starter at the University of Georgia. He and in those do. three years, yeah, in, in those three years, he only gave up one sack and one mm-hmm. quarterback hit. He gave up his sack his freshman year, and he gave up the quarterback hit his sophomore year. That's even better numbers than Zach Frazier. And y'all yeah, know I've been talking about Zach yes, Frazier. Sir. Yeah, I've been talking about Zach Frazier. You know, I don't think he has a, a wrestling background like Zach Frazier, but they're, they're, they're the same in size, 163, 164. They both wear 310, both three-year starters in college, one with two-time defending national champions, Georgia in the SEC, one with West Virginia in, in the Big 12. So, Hey, like I said, I had to go back and get that man props because I, I didn't realize he started all three years. But to that, I don't know why I, with that kind of production coming from a championship caliber team like Georgia, I don't think he'll be around in the third round. So that part, you know, yeah, pe- people can wait and think that he's going to be be available in the third round. There's a lot of teams that need offensive linemen. Hey, they they typically go off the board earlier than that. So, but mm-hmm. I still feel like that center position is much needed for us, and we need to address it with one of those uh, with one of those First two picks, picks in the second round. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't think three yes. because I mean you can still get Bo Limmer. You still can get Bo Limmer. You can still get Cooper. I, at that, yeah, those 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 guys those guys are good. But why pass up on an All American? Or mm-hmm. a three year starter with those type of productions. When I looked at Bo Limmer, Bo Limmer in his career, I think he gave up like seven or eight sacks. Mm-hmm. That's still nothing to sneeze at. But when you compare eight to one or eight to three, you I mean, the, the, Tony, I don't, I don't yeah, like the, giving excuses. You know who his quarterback was, though, right? Only reason why I hate the University of Arkansas. Bo Limmer. Yeah, oh, no Limmer's quarterback. Yeah, Jefferson. And if yeah. you watch, and yeah. if you watch football on Saturdays. You know the reason why I'm not going to put most of those sets on Bo Limmer. Yes, he gave them up, but I'm not going to put all those sets on him. I will right. not. But that's not yeah. an excuse, yeah. though, because, yeah. again, if you look at it, we can we can say that about um, Frazier. They didn't have the best of quarterback out there in West Virginia. That's so, true. So, again, like I said, that's I can't true. do that excuse. It's just, you know, I just – I just, I just can't stand Arkansas, but I really love Bo Lemon's story, <laughs> and I, 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 I it's, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. Yeah, yeah. but well, what, 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 whether that position is addressed in the second round with one of the two picks or the top of the third, it just needs to be addressed. That, that's oh, if it, do, if it does it, it it's going to be, be a red flag. If if Dan Morgan does yeah. not address that. I, I would say this: If they don't address it, period, in the draft, I understand that if they go a different route, the board falls. We get different players. If they do not draft a center or bring in somebody, it's going to cause a lot of red flags and it's going to cause a lot of questioning in the fan base. 
which they already ready to jump on Dan Morgan for anything that he hasn't done correctly. But if he doesn't draft a center or bring in a center that can compete, the word that he said he wants competition at each position, then it's going to be mm-hmm. a problem. Yeah. Right. Max. Hey, right. Now, I think I think the offensive line is interesting because I said this a lot. Now, That's a fact. Q, uh, QJ Smith. That's a fact. KJ Jackson. He was yes. a quarterback for um, Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas. Arkansas. Okay. Arkansas. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking West Virginia for a moment. I was like, no, we're not talking about the kid from uh, West Virginia. But um, but yeah. Now, me and Tony talk about this a lot. Okay. Bryce dropped back in the pocket. All right, and there was a lot of plays where you had Icky's man getting past him, Moulton's man getting past him, but he didn't have a a clean pocket. Like hit both of his guards and his center more times than not were pushed back into his face. So even if Icky and Moulton could potentially push their men past Bryce Young, Bryce Young didn't have a pocket to step up into. Okay, mm-hmm. so you go out. And you put uh, you spend a hundred million dollars on Hunt. You spend fifty on Lewis. Okay, you got Austin Corbett there. Who um, he said now, Paul? You know T Rex arms can't reach the ball. <laughs> but you, you, you got, got, you got <laughs> yeah, you you got Austin Corbett there. Okay, he's had two injuries in the same calendar year. All right, and like I said, there's still this speculation about when he played center or attempted to play center or whatnot and i'm sure the panthers are going to you know do their due diligence okay but this is if i'm not mistaken this is the last year on corbett's contract okay so yes why not why not at 33 or 39 if you if you um like daniel said earlier in the chat if you have a graham barton who may still be there at 39 or just uh or um jackson powers johnson or a zach frazier why not go ahead and pick them up? Corbett, if he resigns, great, you know, or whatever, or if he doesn't, you get what I'm saying? But you go ahead and draft for that position now, and then that'll be your center from uh if, if just say Corbett goes out there and has a you know an all pro year at center. Okay, I would love for it to happen. Not saying it's going to happen, but just a what if, all right. But then the side the Panthers decide they're not going to bring him back next year for whatever reason. Okay, you've already got your center, your future center here, and he's on his rookie deal. So I say if there's one available at those first two picks, you you go ahead and take it because Bryce has to have some sort of a a pocket to be able to step up into. He can't have both his guards in the center, you know, six inches from his face every other play. So Who is Sling? KQJ, who who is Sling Blade? (laughs) <laughs> forget, forget. <laughs> temple look like sling blade. <laughs> sling blade. I've heard that before. <laughs> oh god. Mm-hmm. All right. So, fellas, um, I think we can all agree that the biggest position of need right now is center. Okay. So we got Corbett. Yeah. Injuries. Um, Mays. He's he's K Mays. You you know I don't think he got to play much center last year except for in the preseason. Because uh, Bradley Bowles was right. playing the entire season. All right. So um, let's go ahead and give some grace for the offensive line. What do y'all think they stand at right now? Go ahead. Go ahead, Doug. I went first. La- I'll say I went first last time. So I'll let you go. And I was going to go after you. No, go ahead. Um, that's C+. Plus. Okay. And the reason why C+, plus is... I support Icky, but Icky cannot have a bad year like he had last year. Um, right now, three out of the five on this offensive line are solid. One is in the top tier as, at his position. If I'm not mistaken, he was number one, and that's Robert Hunt. Um, Taylor Moten, I think he graded out at an 80-something last year. Uh-huh. And he's – um so – and then Damian Lewis – um, he does he does have a lot of pros, but his cons is he can he he can get off leverage, meaning that his upper body is is not is not great posture for a guard. But overall, I give it a C plus because again, I am worried about that center position as of right now. 
And if Icky does have another bad year, we wasted a pick where we thought Icky was going to be our left tackle. I do believe in him, but right now I give it a a, 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 a C plus. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, yeah for for me, I I I would give it a. I would give it a C, and based off uh, the the pros, yes, we upgraded the guard position with Lewis and Hunt, so I, I definitely like those moves. Cause CJ, you know, I've been saying for the past couple of years we need to be bigger, more stout up the middle. So I do like that. Um, the the two cons is with Corbett, like. Um, Doug just mentioned coming off two major knee injuries on the same knee within the same year. You know, let's not forget that. It, it was like as soon as he came back from one, the other happened. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about playing that center position, when you talk about taking on someone like Vita Vea twice a year, that we know he coming straight up the middle and he coming with pressure. Can you withstand that type of beating, that type of um, contact uh, for, you know, for four quarters, you know, and then you had to do it twice a year against someone like Vita Vey. Then we play the Giants. You got, you know, you, you, you're going to get that same kind of treatment uh, from Dexter Lawrence. So just not, just not knowing how that knee is going to um, withstand the pressure you know, come back from those, those injuries is definitely a red flag for me and Icky because he regressed so much last year. Like, I hope that his third year with better coaching, you know, in, in a better scheme, you know, build his confidence back up to where it was as a rookie. I hope it turns what looked to be a plus in the beginning his first year was definitely a negative in his second year. Let's see if we can get it back on that plus side uh, in his third year. So those are the two cons right there between Corbett and uh, Icky. But he's going to be our left tackle. He's not going nowhere. So all you can do is put hope in him. Mm -hmm. Now, MDJ said, y'all do know the saying in the NFL that it takes time for the O-line to gel, so to say. The whole interior is new pieces and coach. Mm -hmm. Hey. Well, the, yeah, I, yeah, that that is facts. But uh, Damian Lewis does have a heads up with that because he played in this scheme uh, in Seattle when uh, Dave Canales was in uh, Seattle. Even though he wasn't the offense coordinator, he knows the system that Dave Canales is going to run. So, mm -hmm. but, hey, but look but at, you're look at this, Tony. You're absolutely right. Look at Paul say. He said, "Would you trade?" Taylor Moulton for uh second mid round or two mid round picks in the draft and play Brady Christensen at right tackle and free up more money with the cap. I wouldn't because okay. with Taylor Moulton, you know exactly what you're getting. Taylor Moulton has been like the the Iron Man, the, the Paul Bain of the offensive line. I think over his career, he's only missed two games. You know, mm -hmm. so you 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 can you can definitely count on him being there. You know exactly what you're going to get. Even last year, I think because the old O line looked so horrible as a unit, and he did have some horrible mo moments, but he only gave up two sacks last year. And I was shocked when I read that. I was like, "Are they sure?" Because, damn, just 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 the way he looked last year looked like. It, he gave up more than that, but he only actually gave up two <laughs> sacks last year. You know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, Tony. So, yeah. Hey, hey, look. Remember, remember I always said that um, it, they were both getting beat. It's just the icky man got to the quarterback first. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You and, did and, say and, that, and, and I and, and I say that as as a as a joke. But if you go look at some of the tape, in some cases, it's, it's, it's exactly it's true. true they they both <laughs> getting beat on the same play, but somebody from the uh, from the left side is getting there before Taylor Moulton's guy. So, but yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. ain't a doubt about that.
But I no, <laughs> I, I don't I, I would so to answer your question. No, I wouldn't trade them for two mids. Dependent, well, let me say depending on where those two mids are, Paul, because uh to me, because of his longevity and his uh consistency, that that's to me that I think that would be kind of hard to replace and you want some some good comp compensation in return for that so i wouldn't take anything less than third round for uh taylor moton okay gotcha all right did uh did you get your grade on the line tony yeah i said c okay i said c all right Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to give my the same thing as I did with the defensive line. I'm going to give it a C um because of the unknown of Corbett being our center. Okay. Um I do think that Icky will have a better year this year. And like that's that's just a thought. You know, I'm I'm not sure, but you know, I'm hoping he does. Um Lewis and Hunt, I'm hoping that they both can step up and, and fortify, you know the front of the pocket for Bryce Young to be able to step up into, okay? And Corbett is no slouch, okay? We know he can hold his own in, in, in a block, but like I said, two injuries in, this, in the calendar year and, you know, minimal experience playing center. So that that's my question mark. So I, I, I give them a C as well. You know, I'm, I'm still sticking with my, we, we got to wait and see, okay? All right. So let me go ahead and bring this up here and we are going to get into going to get into a mock draft, y'all. Oh, snap. All right. So now PFF has finally, finally came to a right state of mind and have given us the uh, 141st pick. OK, and the Giants have 166, so we don't have to go in and force a uh, a trade anymore. All right. And like I was saying earlier, OK, with these next episodes that we do and we take a look at each uh, position group, we're going to sort of tailor the draft to that um, to these position groups. And tonight is going to be offensive line and defensive line, not the entire draft. OK, but we're going to see, you know, who is there. Uh, who we can take around 33, 39, and 65 and see how that plays out. Okay. Okay. So, let me see. So let's get into it. All right. So now let me go ahead and bring up center or interior offensive lineman and interior defensive lineman. Defensive interior. There we go. All right, so best available on the board for these position groups: Jackson Powell was Johnson, Zach Frazier, Braden Fisk, uh, Rook. I don't know how to say his last name. Chris Jenkins, Christian Hayes, Brandon Doyleus, uh, Tavon J. Sweat is down in at seventy four. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what do you guys think? Real, real quick before Doug go. Jackson mm -hmm. Power Johnson, if I'm not mistaken, he did not give up a sack in three years. Mm. If you click click on the show, the show more, and then click on um his stats, CJ. Okay. If I'm if he did, it was no more. Yep, mm. no sacks. Okay, no sacks in three years. And I went back and I watched a little bit of uh the highlights. Of course, you know that's all that's out there on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I think he had a little bit more. He has a little bit more um, agility than Bradley Bozeman. I don't think he plays as stiff as Bradley Bozeman uh, did. I think he's a little bit – he can be – if you need him to be a pulling center, mm -hmm. I think he's able to do that. I, I see that he's good at combo blocks and reaching the second level, good feet, good base. You know, he had good being in some of the tapes that I um some of the highlights, uh snaps that I seen. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I didn't give him much credence at, at first. Plus, as well, I didn't think he would be available. I don't think he'll be available in the second round. But if 
just so happened he was to fall, I wouldn't be mm. mad at that pick. So if you could be a big guy and you got nimble feet and you can move, well, that goes right along with the two the two guards that we just signed with uh, Hunt and Lewis because they're big guys, but they got good feet as well. So, okay. I just and pointed let out. me uh, and and Doug, before you get your thoughts, let me say this. Okay, so tonight we're doing both sides of the trenches. So, if you were to choose, if you had to choose at thirty three, what would be the bigger need right now, center or um, nose tackle? Okay, center. which one would everybody pick here? Center. Uh, center. Okay. Yeah, right. because if it's if it's like Dave Canale said, you know, and I believe him to be true to his word, he wants Bryce to be comfortable in the pocket. He wants to play to Bryce's strength, and we all know that you have to protect Bryce Young in order to in, in order to get the uh, the maximum production out of Bryce mm -hmm. and to to build, you know. To get him to play to his strength, you have to be able to protect him. So I, I yeah. think center is definitely uh, paramount. Okay, now let me bring up this comment here from uh, Charlotte's movie. Uh, how you say that? Movie file? Movie field? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for messing your movie, name up. Movie file. Okay. It says, I don't want to use our highest picks on insurance pieces. And then he gives another comment. It says, what if Corbett does stay healthy, does do well with the new interior, then the highest pick we use is sitting out on the bench, not filling a hole. Now, you know, you, you do bring up a good point. You do bring up a good point. But in, in the same sense, you flip that around. What if uh, yep. Corbett doesn't stay here? That, that's the whole point of having, you know, have, having insurance. Right. And, right. okay, what if Corbett does come in there and he does great this year? But this is the last year of his deal, and just say for whatever reason they decide to move on from him next year. So you've already got your center that you don't have to draft next year. And 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 uh Diggett made a good comment too. He said Corbett can play other positions because remember he was a mm -hmm. right guard. And if if the if the uh leg isn't a hundred percent and for whatever you know, he lose the center position or whatever. Now you have a capable backup at either guard positions. So mm -hmm. not saying that he will be off the team because, you know, Corbett isn't going anywhere. But yeah. if you get someone like Jackson Power Johnson on mm -hmm. a rookie deal, young, that's, a you know, that has the kind of credentials or come with the resume that he comes with, that that's an mm -hmm. upgrade. I, yeah. I don't care how long Corbin has been playing in the league. Jackson Power Johnson or Zach Frazier or Cedric Van Pran will be an upgrade over Corbin at the center position. Yeah. And just say, you know, God forbid, I don't hope, want this to happen, but just say Hunt or Lewis does have an injury. Maybe they miss a couple games. Okay, right. cool. You got it. You got a center there waiting. You slide Corbin back over the guard. Now you might be able to keep on moving without, you know, not saying it's going to uh, be seamless. You know, it may or may not be, but you might be able to keep the show going without missing too many beats. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, appreciate you, Josh. Johnson. Yeah, he has a few good yeah, takes every yeah. now and then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> only, thing, only thing I was going to say is a lot of people, we were upset. What happened when Bray Christensen and Austin Corbett went down? You had no depth. And again, regardless, regardless if he sits or not, mm -hmm. Tony just alluded to it. Um, Corbin is a free agent next year. Again, yeah. if he goes down, who do you have behind him to step up? Not K Mays. We haven't seen what K Mays has done. And when we have seen him play guard, a lot of people, you know, were very upset with his play, saying that he wasn't fast enough. He didn't have the mm -hmm. quick feet to move. So, again, yeah. I understand that you don't want to use your premium 33rd pick. But, again, this, again, like uh, like CJ said, we're going based off of need right now. This is not how the board's supposed to go. But if they're thinking we need offensive linemen first, they're going to do the same thing that we're doing right now, just looking at the options and going down the board mm -hmm. and going down the scheme and going down the fit. Yep. Right. Thanks. 
Hey, okay. Paul Mancini hit on the head. He said the Panthers draft center Power Johnson. Then he's a starter. And Cor Corbin is the backup for center Thanks. guard or even trade material. Yeah, I agree yep. with that. I agree with that. Because mm -hmm. let me let me tell you, if we draft the center, I will be surprised, very very surprised, if Corbin is the starting center game one if he's healthy. If right. we draft, especially this high, if we draft the center, I think before the preseason over with game one, it more likely they'll be starting. So we'll, we'll see. All right. Well, let's go ahead and pick um pick JPJ up here. Okay. Now, all right. Now, like we said, this is kind of a, a trenches focused draft here. So we got center. So let me go right. and look at the other side of the ball. Defensive interior. And there's our man Braden Fisk in there. All right. Then you got uh Rook Arthur Arthur Horo or whatever his name. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Just call Rook. <laughs> Rook. Yeah. You know, like a like, group, <laughs> like group. <laughs> Just call him yeah. Rook. I, I am Rook. Yeah, there you My go. My name is Rook. <laughs> Chris Jenkins. You got Brandon uh Doorless and Tavondre Sweat is still on the board here. Okay. So, gentlemen, what would y'all do here? Go ahead, Doug. I'm on mute, my bad, fellas. Um, <laughs> you already know I called him that, what, Embobino? Um, what did I call him? I didn't call him Embobino. Yeah, Albino, Albino Snowman. Yeah, Albino Polar Bear. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so Albino Polar Bear. You, you already know. You already know who I'm going with. Again, I do think. Okay. That's a tag team that is a force to be reckoned with. And Tony and I yeah. have said this. When has Derrick Brown had a running mate? What did KK Short have? We doubled down in that All actual draft. Way. But we doubled yeah. down, correct. We doubled down yeah. in that draft. And Derrick Brown yeah. has not had anybody that's been brought in. And what I mean by brought in, I mean drafted. Because where do you win drafts? Or where do you win to build your roster is through the draft. Like I said, right. Ashawn Robinson is a great, um, a great um, acquisition, but you have well, a what prom is his contract. Well, Ashawn, year, two years, yeah. two. Everybody got two. He got two. Okay, mm -hmm. he okay. got two as well. Okay. So again, when you look at it, I, I I really think we've never had a had him have a person that he can come in mold and have a tag team. And with Braden Fisk, that's 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 just filthy. That's very filthy. Very filthy. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I'm with it. You know, like we said, we're doing this for, uh, for, for the trenches purposes of this draft. So let's go ahead and, and get brain and fist. And like um, started movie for I said, imagine if this happened. It said, man, the trench is set on both sides. Exactly. Facts. Big. Facts. Exactly. Uh, listen, I, I, I've been... I've, for the past couple of days, I've been seeing comments on Twix and, you know, uh, other, other commentary amongst uh, Panther Podcasts. And I just want to just toot my own horn because I, I see people coming on around to the fact that we just may draft a center because we need a center. Mm -hmm. that, that That's just, you know, the sexy pick is, of course, wide receiver. But the draft is so deep in wide receiver. So I don't think it's imperative that we have to take a wide receiver with the first two picks because we have so many other holes to fill. That that uh center position, nose tackle position, defensive end, edge, you know, cornerback, there's a lot of different places that we can go at this, you know, um to help strengthen the the core of this team. That it doesn't necessarily have to be a wide receiver with uh one of the first two picks. We got Deontay Johnson, got Adam Thielen. The verdict is still out on what you know what Jonathan Mingo is gonna do. So so arguably you have your top three wide receivers already on the roster. Unless you get someone like Rome Meduse or Malik Neighbors or Brian Thomas or Marvin Harrison Jr. There's nobody else that you can draft right now currently that can come in to be a potential number one or a number two 
this year. I'm not talking about in the future. I'm talking about what the Panthers need as far as help right now. All these other guys are not that type of wide receiver right now. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. This one was free. <laughs> Go ahead, CJ. <laughs> I think CJ muted. Is he muted? Yeah, he muted. Damn, I sure yeah. am. My bad. You, I'm you, sorry. Yeah. I'm just a talking. I, I was throwing <laughs> soda in, in the cup here, and I put myself on mute. But um, <laughs> but I was gonna say we <laughs> we had picked 65. All right. And speaking of wide receivers, these are the best available right now. You got Jalen Pope, Jalen McMillan, Devontae Walker, Javon Baker, Johnny Wilson, Jamari uh, Thrash, and Malachi Corbin. Okay. Now I'll pres pre I'll present this to you as well. So if we go anything other than wide receiver with 33 and 39, we pick at 65, we don't pick again until 101, unless there's a trade of some sort that happens. Me personally, I'm in the belief that most of these guys are going to be gone. And we're if we don't pick here wide receiver, give Bryce one more weapon, okay. We are going to be looking at, you know, Brendan Rice and Jacob County and Nia, and Nia Smith. Mind you, I'm not saying anything bad about any of those guys, but, but you know, I'm just saying these guys here will more than likely be gone. Let me just throw this Go out ahead, there fella. before Doug gets started. I did a little bit more research on uh, Malachi Corley. When his first two years at Western Kentucky, he was a running back. So he's mm -hmm. new at this at this wide receiver um, position. So he would be a project, a developmental piece coming into the league. He hasn't had, he, he's not, he, he doesn't know what the full route tree looks like right now. So he would be more of your gadget player, mm -hmm. i.e. Um, um, what, what's, your, what's your board? No, not ISM. Uh, before him, that we just had that that we let go, we got from Jack, uh, Jacksonville. Oh, we talking about Lavisca? Yeah, Lavisca should know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, so that that that's that's on Mal Malachi Corley. Um, scroll down. It was somebody. Scroll scroll down, CJ. It was somebody that you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brendan Rice, Jacob Cowan. And Anaya Smith. Let me tell y'all something. Anaya Smith is a true slot receiver. He is a problem in the middle. Brandon Rice, son of Jerry Rice. He know anything about the route tree, he can run. Very productive his senior year. I think he had like 12, 13 touchdowns. Uh Jacob Cowan had 13 touchdowns his senior year. So, like I said, there, there are guys that had that have had production. That will be there in the fourth round. The guys mm -hmm. that you're not necessarily looking for them to come in and be a number one or number two, but can be a contributor and can upgrade wide receiver three or wide receiver four position than what we had last year. So when I look at Brendan Rice, when I look at Jacob Cowan, Ania Smith, you still got Malik Washington out there. I know a lot of people compare Malik Washington. To Steve Smith because of the height. I think he's only like five eight. He's five um, eight. I'll say Tariq Hill. I want to yeah. say Smitty. Yeah, okay. I don't know. He I don't know if he got Tariq Hill, Tariq Hill speed. He got speed. He got speed. Yeah. He got well, speed. Don't, don't, sleep, don't sleep on Smitty because Smitty came out running like a four three eight. At, oh no, 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 Smitty. He came out. Smitty, <laughs> Smitty was a was was shooting a, a ball out of the cannon. And I just say off of yeah. even, I look at him doing returns. But now go mm -hmm. ahead, Tony, because I, I got a point that I think everybody should know with wide receivers. I'm a shout but out. I'm a go ahead, go ahead, Tony. Yeah, don't don't. I'm just saying, uh, uh, Nia Smith from Texas a and sleeper. That's all I'm gonna say. Go ahead, Doug. I was gonna say this, and I'm, I'm we're we're working. I'm um, putting cat out the bag. I know Tony and I, Tony. And I, Tony and CJ will be on What's Up, Doug, next week. And I'm already behind the scenes looking at things. One thing people have to understand is 
we're having visits. We just had five different players from five different players come in for visits today in Charlotte. And if you look at the at the visitors um, list for wide receivers, we've had eight wide receivers come in so far off of visits. And either they had visits or we were at pro days. And I'm going to just read the names off because if we're looking at wide receivers right now, they're looking at a certain type. You got Xavier Worthy, Xavier Leggett, Jalen Polk, Malachi Corley, Jalen uh, McMillan, um, Tez Walker, and Brendan Rice. Okay. So, right again, yes, we can say all these wide receivers' names, but if they haven't had actual contact with them, they're possibly not looking at them. And that's where I'm saying when I'm doing these mocks now, I'm looking at who are we bringing in, who have our coaches actually went and visited at Pro Days. Like, from my understanding is, our O line and wide receivers coach was at Washington's pro day. That opened my eyes for Jalen Polk and McMillan. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I and whenever they did, I had to look at more Polk, you know, film because again, if it's Avery Leggett is gone, everybody wants Lad McConkey. Carolina has not been in contact with Lad McConkey that we know of. Mm, so, right. again, everybody can All say, right. "Oh, I want to draft. I want to draft Lad. I want to draft Lad. I want to draft Lad." You want to draft lab, but does Carolina have contact with him? Mm. So okay, I that, think lad is always, gone. Yeah, but but it always th- this is the time of year where there's a lot of smoke and mirrors that you know nobody wants to tip their hand and show their hand right. who they possibly could be truly in you know interested in. They may draft a player that they didn't even bring in on a visit. You know they may have got watched enough tape or maybe it's spoken to said player at the combine or whatever and didn't feel a need to bring him in. You know, th- th- there's a lot of smoking players. There's a lot of moving pieces. Um, what, what was that? <laughs> oh, Sorry, about just keep talking. <laughs> oh, but um, yeah. So it, 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 you, you never know. You never, you never know when it comes to uh I was Atlanta. saying this. A, a lot of people were saying it's hush hush, and Josh does have a point. They talked to Lad at the Senior Bowl, but Malik, if I'm not mistaken, was at the Shrine Bowl. I don't think Malik mm. made it to the um, the Senior Bowl. But again, Tony has a good point. You you don't know it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but I think why wouldn't you bring in people where you're actually able to have them for longer than 30 minutes in a session? So that's what I'm saying. When you bring them in in house and you're actually able to have a day with them, actually be able to do field work with them, actually break down film with them. I think it's almost I think I, th- I think it's essential to do that. But again, like you said, it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of smoke and mirrors. And I'm just looking at the visits because when I'm doing these mops, I like to see, hey, we're talking to such and such. Can we actually pull this off with such and such? Like we brought we talked to a tackle today. I was totally shocked. They brought him tackle from Arizona today. Mm. I was totally I shocked. I saw that. I saw that. Well, so, yeah. one thing we, we won't be able to say is they're not doing their due diligence. Facts. Facts. Yep. It won't be for a lack of trying. All right. Well, where y'all want to go here with this pick, number 65? I don't mind Pope or Ben Miller. I, I, I don't okay. want Tez. I, as a Tar Heel, Tez should have stayed in Carolina. And that is my and that is my bias opinion. Mm. He should have stayed at Carolina. So mm. and, it, and it's not it's, and it's not for wins or losses for Carolina. I think Tez just he, he needed one more year. He needed one more year. And if you read, if you read and look at tape, he's gonna be very developmental this year. And next year he can take off, just like they said about um Jonathan Mingo. His second year is gonna be better than his rookie year. Does Bryce need that type of wide receiver coming in where you have to wait for development? Yeah, okay. I, I know. I know, like, when it comes to wide receivers, a lot of people, the first thing people think about is speed. And oh, listen, oh, speed, speed can get you, um, speed can get you by in certain scenarios or what, what have you. Uh, when, when you talk about a quarterback like Bryce, does does a does a speed receiver a deep threat really benefits him? Does it fit this the type of quarterback Bryce is? Bryce throws with anticipation. Bryce 
is all money. Bryce moves on the, you know, moves well on the run. We all know that Bryce don't have the strongest of arms. We know one of his weaknesses is throwing the ball downfield. Can he do it? Yes. But it's not something consistently that you're going to ask Bryce Young to do. He's not going to consistently throw it down the field like Josh Allen. Then he's not going to consistently throw it down the field, even say with CJ Stroud. That's one one thing that me and CJ talked about last year going into the draft. That his only knock, in our opinion, was that his arm just just didn't seem strong enough, especially on deep throws. But short to intermediate routes, you need players that can create separation, that are great, you know, that has uh, nat- that are natural hands catchers. People that know how to um, get open in space. So when the play breaks down and Bryce is rolling out to the right, the receivers need to flow that way. So, that, you know, they can find a spot in the zone or what have you and be ready to receive the ball. We saw that last year when Bryce would break, you know, when the play would break down and he would scramble left to right. But hell, he mm-hmm. didn't have no damn receivers to throw to because they didn't, the flow. To either, you know, to the same side as the quarterback as the play broke down. So you need uh, receivers that can do that. Quick win off the line of scrimmage, create separation, and that are natural hands catcher. I think that fits more of uh, Bryce Young. Uh, and um, that, that fits more of who he is as a quarterback. You're not looking for someone that consistently just take the top off the uh, defense. He's not that type of quarterback. I don't think so, in my in my personal opinion. It's, it's nothing wrong with Deacon Dunk. If you move the chains and you get in that box, right? That's all that's important, right? Okay. Hey, Tom Tom Brady Tom Brady won seven Super Bowls. Been to ten, won seven. Tom Brady was a dink and dunk type of quarterback, and he'll hit you over the top occasionally if need be. But short intermediate, mm-hmm. he was a master at it. So just let that sink in. Okay. All right. Now somebody did mention in the in the chat here that there's uh one guy that I know Tony and us Tony and me we like a lot, Edrin Cooper sitting there. All right. So he he he's sitting there. Now we'll get to the um we'll get to the linebackers in a different video. Um for you know giving up we'll we'll give them our grades. And kind of censor that draft around the linebackers because I do have an interesting right. take that Tony um, brought to my attention that I do want to play and Doug, I want to make sure you're there when we do that video because y'all did have a debate about this. Um, I want to say a couple a couple lives ago about, about who um, Adrian Cooper and Peyton Wilson. Yes. Mm-hmm. No. Me and me and Tony are on the, me and Tony are on the same page. Just that particular oh, okay. day we were going back. He know he knows I'm an Adrian oh, Cooper okay. over. Over Peyton Wilson all day, all okay. day. Mm-hmm. I got you. Okay, well, even still, I record them on my phone. Oh no, I'll, I'll be ready. It. I'll be ready. I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Like I said, if you, if you want me to play devil's advocate, I will. But trust me, Edrin Cooper is is he's yeah, you, him. You'll lose on you'll lose on this one. Don't 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 do it. Don't don't just okay. just agree. This is just agree and move on. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, who who y'all want to go with here? All right. Who did you? I, I had the wide receiver. Oh, sorry. So, 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 do you want us to draft a wide receiver, or is it just best player available? Um, I was thinking in this situation. Let me go back to wide receiver. Okay, I was thinking that by the time we pick again at one oh one, most of the most of wide receivers going to be gone. Most of wide receivers going to be gone. Okay. And I do want them to get one more, you know, weapon for Bryce Young. So I would, me personally, if we take a receiver, I say we do it here. I'll go with Poke. Who you got, um, Tony? Because I truly, I, I really don't know much about either one. I do know Jaden Pope was a wide receiver too to Roma Duze, and uh, McMillan was um, wide receiver three. Mm-hmm. Um. What what? Click on first look, CJ, for Jalen Pope. What's his mm-hmm. size? Six two two or four? Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, hey, 
we we can go with J, we can go with Jalen Pope. Like I said, I I haven't done any uh research on him. Don't much, don't know much about him, so I'm not gonna pretend like I do. Uh, but he is the best wide receiver on the board. If that's the position that we're going with, take take the best player available. All right, let's go with Jalen Pope here. Now 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 watch if we go back and look at wide receivers. Most of them still gonna be there. Let me go take a peek. Sure. Well, still had Nia Smith, Malik Washington. But you know, let's say everybody else above him was gone. Okay, so mm -hmm. we took defensive uh tackle, offensive uh, I'm talking defensive tackle, center, and we got a wide receiver. All right, which I want to look at next, fellas. What about cornerback? All right, yeah, DJ James, DJ yeah. James, DJ Chris Abram James. Drain, Chris Abram yeah. Drain, Jarvis mm -hmm. Brownlee. I've I've seen a couple of mock drafts that had uh Jarvis Brownlee um coming to us in in the third round. I've seen like I think I think two two mock mm -hmm. drafts where they had uh Jarvis Brownlee out of Louisville coming to us. There, there's your there's your boy um the Cam, Cam Hart. Hart. I seen Cam, Cam Hart. Hart. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. I like I like DJ James too. Okay. Yeah, I'm a bring on, up Mr. Uh, show uh, more for DJ James. Okay, I'm gonna kick on Mr. Charlotte Movie File. Come, he said, run it back now. Two on his contract year, he gonna want a bag. You still, you still got plenty of running back. I think you deserved there. it though. Yeah, yeah. But Chuba mm -hmm. Chuba is not going. He's not going to command top five or top ten running back um, dollars. I still think, even though. This is the last year of his contract. I still think you you can get Chuba uh, on a good deal. And, like I said, he has earned it. Let me tell you, I was not a Chuba fan when we first drafted him because based off his tape at Oklahoma State, he didn't show great um, contact, uh, contact balance, and then he didn't show that he can break – tackles what you have to be able to do in NFL. Everything was wide open lanes for Chuba uh, in college. I remember that draft because I wanted Khalil Herbert out of Virginia Tech over Chuba Hubbard. Chicago took um, Khalil Herbert and we got Chuba, but Chuba has definitely grown on me and he has progressively gotten better since his rookie year because me and CJ used to give him head. You know, can't, can't keep his hell, feet. Hell. You know, they say be where your feet is. You know, can't catch nothing. Can't can't run. He couldn't can't get right. That that's what his name was, Ricky. Yeah. Can't, can't get, get right. right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but he has truly gotten progressively better. So I had to give props to what props is due. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now uh Robert Catacomb said our running back room is bad. Okay, I'm gonna disagree. I don't think our running back room is is, is bad. Okay, because right. you had Chuba and Foreman in there um, the year before, okay, and we committed to that power run scheme, smash mouth football, and they both did good. Uh, Foreman almost had a thousand yards, and then this year, Chuba almost had a thousand yards. I do think that Miles said if if Dave Canales does what he said that he was going to do, okay. And if he finds the right place for Miles Sanders, the right place for Chuba, and you mix in uh, Raheem Blackshear in there as well, who we do believe is underutilized in the run in the run game, you know, especially on third down. If it, it, I run it back room may surprise you, okay? Because you got to remember, uh, Miles Sanders went from that offensive line in Philadelphia to the whatever we called it, what we had last year. Okay, whether you want to call it a shit show or you know, uh, just full of injuries, just whatever. Okay, so as I've been saying through this whole time, I give Miles Sanders a little bit of grace, see what he does. That ghost daddy, you know, he hey, he might surprise, he might surprise, this right? Year. Exactly, you know, so so we'll see, we'll see. But, um, I'm I'm kind of with y'all here. I, Cornerback is another position, okay? And I know somebody yes. missing, uh, mentioned Kaylee Carson uh, in the comments, and um, I heard that yeah, he kind of – Wait for us. Yeah, yeah, I heard he kind of tells his game. He kind of tells his game. After J.C. Horn. After J.C. Horn, but he's also but, injury prone too. 
Yeah, I was going to say that, TJ. Yeah, he, he is yeah. injury prone. He, 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 I don't think he's had a healthy season at Wake Forest. Mm-hmm. It's the most games okay. he played his senior year. But yeah, he's definitely injury prone. Okay. Uh, you click know what? On, click on DJ James. I want to see his uh, first look. His okay. side. Hold on, me, first look. Carson. Carson, mm-hmm. nine games in 2001, eight, 2002, and 11 last year. And let me go back. So you said Carson. He gave him no, four, DJ oh, James. Four, DJ James. DJ James. My bad. DJ James. Okay. First look. First Six up. one 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 sixty four. Well, he got okay. the height, but he definitely need to eat. Yeah. <laughs> He's frail. So, yeah. Somebody. He's very somebody frail. mentioned those Bojangles coupons. They they need to give him some when 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 he's <laughs> <when, when, laughs> That joke need to spam sandwich. They need to have, have, a, have a stack of them waiting for him. <laughs> to take him to show Mars. <laughs> And then Krispy Kreme Kreme donuts and some Krispy Kreme donuts and milk (laughs) with it. Uh, Now his Uh, um his coverage grade was good, eighty eight point nine. Run defense fifty three points. It's terrible. It's terrible. His run defense is terrible. Terrible. Yeah, I mean, but he he weighs as much as a um, a, a pack of copy paper. So you know, but he was good (laughs) in man coverage and zone. So yeah, he's good. He's real good. Real good. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a take a shot with them. Like I said, most of All these right. mocks, I know exactly if they fall the way, I already got my plan. When you say a player, hey, bam, bam, bam. And that's what I'm mm-hmm. doing. I'm just so ready for this draft because there's so much mix and match you can do. You can look, you can look at tight end and running back now. Hey, look, that hey, I, that's exactly where I went. Hold on. Hey, Theo Johnson has been going up draft boards quickly. Quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, also a tight, also tight end. Jaheim Bell is coming in for his thirty visit. The Panthers bring him in for a thirty visit. I, I didn't see that, that one yesterday. I saw I that yesterday. That okay, okay, bet, bet yes, bet, sir. Bet. All right. Well, so we got back to back when so. uh when 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 we talk about um I think it was said Dave Canales was talking about they were looking for a Swiss Army knife. This mm-hmm. or not. Hey, Jaheim J- Jaheim Bell is the best Swiss Army knife right now on the board. You talking no. about when he was at South Carolina? I ain't talking. About, I'm I'm not even talking about his stats when he was at when when he was at Florida State last year. But the year before when he was at South Carolina, he played running back. He was a short yardage back, tight end, and he played some wildcat quarterback. So you talking about some versatility? You talking about like um. Your, your your boy for the Saints, um, oh um, oh dang it, the quarterback, um, I yeah. can't think his name, the one that ran Out all over. I know, I yeah. know who y'all talking about. I know yeah, exactly I who y'all talking about. Yeah. So we, so we all know his name. God dog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you talking about a uh, Swiss Army knife, yeah, J- Jaheim Bell definitely fits the bill. God, take some hill. Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill. Yep. Yeah, that's him. Taysom Hill. I had to look him up. I appreciate that, Chris Doug. Appreciate that, Andre. Appreciate it. Taysom Hill. Yes. I made a whole short on how he ran rough shot on us last year. But yeah, take that second Hill. that, that okay. second game of the year. The second game of the year was kind of hard to see him do what he did. And it was the same play over and over. Oh, and, he and came that's in. exactly that's exactly what I said in the short. I put on there, I was like, you know what's coming. When he He'll gets in the play. game, you know he's getting the ball and he's going to sweep left or go right. You know what's coming, yeah. and they and they could and they couldn't stop it. It was Five, hard six, watching seven, eight yards of play. Yep. It was hard watching, man. Mm-hmm. It, it sure was. And that was at that point in the season where Carolina's run defense just got on the field and was like, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Just, they they threw their hands up and was just like, hey, we, we can't stop him. But yeah. 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 Pay some hit. So what? Okay. So this is pick one forty one. So mm. this this is in, in interesting with pick one forty one, one forty two because I was I would say. Well, let me ask the question: Do y'all think we should double dip a wide receiver or corner here? No, you need a um, running back, a tight or a tight end. I, I'm I'm gonna agree because with Kay, on this. because I'm gonna say Kaylin King, you've been able to get. After the one fortieth pick, and I learned from Kalen King and from you, Tony. So he's still there. 
So I, I, I yeah. really think that, you don't you so don't double down yet. Yeah. Pick one at pick one forty one after one forty one and one forty two. We don't pick again to two forty. Correct. But I, mean, I agree with you. I, I I do agree with you. I think tight end is more of a need than running back. And when I say Jaheim Bell, you can potentially get you can potentially kill two birds with one stone. You talking about the short yardage back because he can play some fullback. He can mm -hmm. play uh the he can be that short yardage back that you're looking for. I watched him do it in South Carolina, and he also can play tight end. Okay. So you you can get you can get you can kill two birds with one stone with Jaheim Bell. Just, just click on his um click on his profile and see what it says about him. You ain't I don't, I don't think you're gonna be able to get any of his um he, anything that there's no analysis. Okay. No, mm -hmm. just, nah, just I'm saying you're not gonna get none. You don't get none of that. You're what's his what's his first look? What's his size? Uh six three, two thirty nine. Two forty. Yeah. So I mean that that's the hybrid, that's more like an H back, yeah. Says CJ bring up Bell's info. Bell, Bell yeah. Oh, uh -huh. Jaheim Bell. Jaheim oh, Bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you got um, yeah, that that's the hybrid tight end slash mm. H back uh type type of player. You you can do so many things with Jaheim Bell. Again, like I said, that could possibly kill two birds with one stone. Okay. Now, MDJ said, I don't truly don't think we will take a tight end. Tampa didn't seem to feature uh tight end much. I think they rolled Trimble yes, out there with did. Thomas uh, spelling him at times and tough it out. They had uh, Brayton. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't think it was break. It was break and somebody else there. They definitely utilized tight ends. Was, was yeah, it K, they Otten? definitely utilized it. Was Otten the other one? Kate am I thinking wrong? Yeah, Kate Otten. Kate Otten. You're right. Kate okay. Otten and Cameron Brink. Yes, sir. Mm, okay. I like. I think again. I think Theo Johnson's getting the right amount of attention because again, he's a mm -hmm. big body wide receiver. Sit, sit. You can't teach size. You can't right. teach size. Six six and two fit. Yeah, two sixty. I'm telling you. And then, okay. and then, if you look, if you look at his numbers, that's mm -hmm. a red zone threat. Like if you if you look at his yards and touchdowns, they're using them in a red zone. No, they're not utilizing him down the stretch or. Down the field, but when they get in that red zone, they know who they're looking at. And he, and if you, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not looking at my phone, but if I'm not mistaken, yeah, mm -hmm. what was it set? Was it seven touchdowns this this season? Seven, Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, seven. Mm -hmm. seven. So it was seven. Okay. I think what it was like five or two the other two years. So again, mm -hmm. like he, he's he, he's utilized at the right time. And like I said, with the running back, I've came high on Will Shipley. I hate Clemson, mm -hmm. but this is not this is not Clemson <laughs> Tiger football anymore. But um, I think Will Shipley will be great in this type of I, um, I don't, offense. I don't because he, he is the complete opposite of what we need in Carolina. We have three Will Shipleys on the team now. I mean, to, to, to okay. be frank, so, when, you, when you look at that, when you look at that, when you look at size and everything that Will Shipley can do, all three of our running backs can do. So so so, so Tony you let get... Tony you let me finish it though. Cause I'm saying draft Will what? Shipley and then and then you send Miles Sanders off for draft capital. And I'm not talking about on draft day. I'm talking about post. Post June first. I hear you, but what what's what's one of the main things and CJ, I know you, you have talked about this. What's one of the main hey, things look, look that here. we need? Thank yes. That, that, Only that you go. we need is a bruiser. Mm -hmm. So when we talking about moving the chains, when we talking about you know third and short or fourth and inches or fourth and one, Will mm -hmm. Shipley is not that type of is not that type. Oh of yeah, back. now now if we're gonna be honest with that. No, he's not. He is not a bruiser. Now this guy right here yeah. is not a yeah. bruiser, but he but he can take contact and take one to the house. Who's that? No, he I, said I, I Isaac, Correct. <laughs> Correct. 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 Yeah. Okay. Isaac Corindo, if I'm not mistaken, he ran like a four three three at the combine. Mm -hmm. That's that's okay. moving for a running back that's six one two twenty five. But one that's of the knocks that was, one of the knocks that was on him is that his play speed didn't match his forty time at the combine. Gotcha. So take 
take that for what it's worth. I, I didn't watch him play any at Louisville. I did watch the ACC championship game, but I didn't even mm. know that he was even on the radar at the time. So I didn't mm. even pay attention to him. Hey, well, let's say for this scenario right here, let's say that um maybe the Panthers picked up Benson not already. Okay. So we get 141, 142. Let's let's I'm go. I'm going and, with and I'm going with Kaylin King. I'm going with Kaylin King, and I'm going with the running back out of Louisville. Like again, shout out to Tony for putting me on Kaylin King. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I that that's a that's one of those gems. If you play NCAA, and whenever mm -hmm. you do your scouting, and that gym popped up, he's a gym. He's a gym. Okay. Yeah. What you think, Tony? I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with it. All right. Because Garendo, he he is a bigger back, and he got home run speed. Correct. Okay. All right. Caleb King. All right. And we are down to our last pick here in a few. You probably you probably still can get the Arizona tight end if he's out there. He's probably gone now. Oh no, there go Tony guy. Jared Wiley. Jared Wiley. Okay. What what about South Carolina's um tight end, Tony? Didn't mean you say so yeah, didn't we say Knox wasn't I bad either? I don't know much about Trey Knox. No, so he, he's smaller than Jaheim Bell. Well, you know, 237, 239. So mm. he, he's a he's taller. So he's like a leaner. 6'5, 237. When I when I see that, that, that reminds me of Mike Evans, the wide receiver of Tampa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Paul. Hey, put put Hunt in the backfield <laughs> and let him yeah, have that. No <laughs> what no what doubt. other tight end did you have up there? You got Jared Wiley. I Jared quit. Wiley's six six. Jared Wiley's another top. He's six six. Six seven two six. Oh. Six seven yep. two sixty. Yep. Okay. So that yeah. And, yeah, and, hey. and he's a good blocker. Yeah, Wiley okay. is too. Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah. All right. Well, let's round it out and take Wiley since we didn't get tight in early. Okay. All right. All right. That that All right. that will be a. Oh, that that would be so lovely if he fell to the seventh round for real, for real. Who oh, Wiley? Okay. Yeah. What... Oh shoot! Well, I'll be there. Okay. A minus. A minus. All right. I'll take it. All right. Yes, sir. And make sure I do not click off the screen. I'm, I'm gonna save this one. I like this one here. All right. Yeah. Why? Why? Wiley was a visit for us as well. Yeah. When? Right because I didn't. I didn't see. I didn't see Wiley had a visit. I see. I see. I just see. We I talked think, to him during the pro. On the, I think he's on the list. Okay. I think he's okay. on the list to come in before the draft. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool beans, fellas. Cool beans. I, I like this draft. And everybody. And if you um, if you joined us late, we were focusing on the trenches in this episode, and we were looking at the defensive line, offensive line, and we kind of reflected that with the top two picks in this draft. We got Jackson Powers Johnson and Braden Fisk from uh, Florida State. And then we kind of went on with the rest of the draft, you know, kind of like we do per usual. All right. So yeah. this episode has been the trenches. I um, don't know exactly what the next episode is going to be yet, but we'll focus on another position group or two. We're going to do linebackers. Uh, but then we're going to do the secondary. We'll also do wide receivers and running backs and maybe not in that particular order. But that is what is going to be coming up. Okay. We say if we draft yes, like sir. this, I'm buying everything in the store. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul said we school. need a young safety too, as both Von Bell and Chen is gone. But Paul, we addressed that safety need uh in free agency when we brought in uh Nick Scott Jordan and Jordan Fuller. Fuller. So I don't think, yeah, I don't think either uh I don't think safety is a position of, of a need. That might be something that could be be addressed in uh you you know throughout free agency or somebody that we can possibly bring in later that can possibly be on the practice squad for you know a depth piece later on down the road. But I think they address that uh in free agency. Okay. All right, cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool. All right, y'all. Well, we appreciate everybody joining us. All right, and this has been our live for the night. And like I said. If you haven't, turn your post notification bells on so you know when we go live again. And in the future, the next few episodes, we're going to take a look at the other position groups and we're going to run this back. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. 
We want to bring you the position groups. We're going to bring you the starters. We're going to take a look at what they have behind them as far as backups. We want to give them our grades. We're going to um, address what we think is their biggest needs. And we're going to try to reflect that in our mock drafts coming up. Okay. So, Doug, Tony, what you got to say to the people? Hey, like I said, man, we got 78 people right now currently watching. Uh, 60 likes. Y'all do us a favor on your way out. Smash that like button. Hit that um, subscribe button. Turn on your post notification bell so you'll be alerted whenever we go live or drop new content. We know we're great. They appreciate you guys as always for coming out and definitely look forward to y'all on, on our next live. Go ahead, Doug. All right, Max, man. Like I said, it's draft season time. The Big Cousins definitely going through a different way or a different lens of the draft. Definitely breaks it down by position need where everybody wants a wide receiver, but we're going off of what happens if the board falls our way. So it was definitely a different way that I seen them be one of the first to do it. Definitely appreciate them. Let me pull up, spit a little knowledge with them, gain a little knowledge with them, man. Like, like if you want to find us over at What's Up, Doug, we definitely got the Big Cousins over there. Really, all throughout, you know, since we've been going live, so I definitely appreciate them coming up and supporting over where I was up, Doug, as well, man. So, again, like oh, I yeah. said, it's draft season, 15 days. Time is ticking, and I think I think a lot of people are eager. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Old oh, man, Tony? No, I, I went first. It's on you, CJ. Okay. My bad. My bad. All right. So, <laughs> like everybody, like everybody said – Make sure y'all hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on your post notification bells. You can catch us on all social media at Two Fans in the Stands and on X at Two Fans ITS. Make sure you go and check out our third fan in the stand, C. Dougie from What's Up, Doug. We appreciate all the love <laughs> and support. Okay. And um, leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Um, anything y'all want to see us do on the channel. Oh, and as always, okay. So we dropped the link. Every time we go live, all right? I want some more of y'all to come on here with us and, and chop it up with us and talk to us, all right? All right. So we, we, we y'all right. see that link That's in right. y'all see that link in the comment section? Hey, feel free, jump on here and talk with us, all right? We want to get more opinions. And like I always say, I don't care if you 100% disagree with us, okay? Come on, we'll talk to you. I want to hear everybody's opinion. We'll debate the subject and we'll talk about the subject. And, you know, we want... You know, we, we we'll, we'll attack the subject and not each other is what i'm trying to say okay right so right come on here let's see what everybody else got to say and we look forward to hearing from y'all all right so as i always do i want to take y'all out with three things all right number one y'all be good number two y'all be safe and as always panther nation and most importantly number three y'all keep pounding and we'll see you